Welcome back to this edition of Frontline. And the agenda standing tall. That is the kind of image that Martin Stone will want played again and again to everyone else backstage in the FWA. Leroy Kincaid motionless in the middle of the ring as the agenda lift their arms in victory above his prone body. I said earlier on, Dave Morales did not get the job done, but I want to take those words back. I think Dave Morales, along with Martin Stone, got the job done exactly how they wanted it done. Okay, he's gonna say he looks like he's been the victim of a gang assault, but frankly that's exactly what's just happened to him. Okay, he's just been mugged. Goodness knows what kind of damage has been done to those ribs. A man like Dave Morales, when he chooses to use his 20 stone body as a weapon, can do untold damage, and that is exactly what he's done tonight in Tiverton to Leroy Kincaid. As you can see from the vicious assault that took place after the match, Leroy Kincaid was taken directly to hospital with suspected fractured ribs. Yet to the surprise of everyone, Kincaid was far from finished for the night. We'll look at the shocking events that concluded the evening on next week's Frontline. However, we can now officially confirm that the main event for Hope and Glory on August the 28th at the Wolverhampton Civic Hall will be a huge tag match pitting Leroy Kincaid and a yet-to-be-named partner against the Agenda's Dave Morales and the FWA World Heavyweight Champion and leader of the Agenda, the Governor Martin Stone. Stone this week responded to Leroy Kincaid's demands for a title shot rematch should he be victorious in this massively hyped contest. The champion has stated that he will put the title on the line for Kincaid once before he leaves for the US, under the proviso that Kincaid agrees to the following stipulation. That being, should Kincaid or his partner lose by pinfall or submission to Stone or Morales at Hope and Glory, he will lose all rights to a championship title rematch permanently. As this latest tactic from Stone and the agenda was only put to the FWA management within the last 24 hours, we have yet to get a response from the resistance camp. However, it should be noted that Kincaid's partner for the evening is being kept a total secret, even from the other members of the resistance. We hope to bring you a definitive word on the stipulation for Hope and Glory's potentially epic main event on next week's show. Don't forget Hope and Glory comes to the Wolverhampton Civic Hall on Saturday, August the 28th. And what a night of wrestling action it's going to be. Already confirmed are El Ligero versus Rockstar Spud and RJ Singh taking on Johnny Storm in the next round of the FWA Flyweight title round robin tournament. The cartel take on the agendas Joel Redmond and Yestin Reese in their FWA tag team title tournament first round match. In an attempt to settle two scores, Chris Travis, Joey Hayes, Sam Bailey and Marty Skrull take part in a four corners match. British wrestling legend Robbie Brookside is given the chance to respond to Martin Stone's venomous words of the art of war. And in what is rapidly becoming the most talked about story on the UK scene, TNA star Doug Williams reveals the apparently huge conspiracy he's uncovered involving several of the world's top wrestling promotions. Tickets for this huge event are available now. And for more information, go to www.fwauk.com. As part of the Adrenalized Channel's FWA archive deal, over the coming months, we'll present some of the most important contests from British wrestling's past. And to kick it off, we're going to take you back to the FWA's joint show with American promotion Ring of Honor at your call in Bethnal Green. Frontiers of Honor was one of the most groundbreaking British shows of its time and Alex Shane's precursor to the UK Super Show concept. Despite a thrilling night of action featuring the likes of Jody Flies, Johnny Storm, AJ Styles, Paul London, Christopher Daniels, Samoa Joe and Loki, it was another wrestler that many people left talking about. The long-awaited in-ring debut of the FWA's resident monster, Paul Burchill, had been six months in the making with a series of high-profile run-ins on other FWA shows. Yet on this fated day in May 2003, 
The world witnessed exactly why the FWA had made it wait for the debut of a man who today is still classed as one of the most powerful forces in British wrestling history. Oh no, Nick, I can hear the music now. It can signal one thing. Virtual is about to make his debut in the FWA. The man the mountain known as Virtual has arrived at Bethnal Green, the York Hall. This man has a promising career in front of him, but first he's got to get through Double Dragon. Nick, it appears what is quite plain to see, we know why Dean Ayers is back. It appears that Dean Ayers is the manager of Virtual. Look at the way he stalks as he's making his way down. Nick, I'm frightened of this man, I've got, I've got to tell you. This will explain why while this match is one year in the making, this has been yet another plan by the twisted genius, Dean Ayers. This is his new protege. Look at him, he's a terrifying monster, Tony. There's no way to put it. Stomping away, Raj goes, Ross John, they do not want Bertrand to get onto his feet. The match is underway, Nick, and this seems to me to be the only way you could possibly tackle someone as big as Bertrand. Two on one at the same time. Ross and Raj now kicking away the legs of Bertrand, but they whip him off the ropes. Bertrand now, no, blocks it. Elbow, close line, and another one. My lord, Tony. Both men are down. That has got to be one of the most impressive starts I've ever seen. As Ross Jordan goes in, oh, the nice Northern Light suplex there, and straight up in one movement. A rolling Northern Light, and now, here we go. It's the Air Raid Crush. Oh, my lord, Nick. That was amazing. My lord, Ross Jordan is dead. I was speaking to Ross in the back. He's seen this as a stepping stone, but it looks like Bertrand just crushed that stone, and now he's got Raj. Raj now, sunset flips over, but no. Bertrand's got him back onto his feet. Bertrand, oh, Raj with the kicks to the stomach there and the legs of Bertrand, trying with some elbows, trying to break free as he's off the ropes. Up he goes, and Bertrand, oh, sit down. Powerbomb. Looked like Raj was going for a hurricanrana, but Birchall saw where he was going. Powerbomb, it could be over one, two, but what's Simmons doing? Oh, Simmons pulling referee Andrew Coyne out of the way. Simmons knew this was all over. I am sick of Simmons and the Duke. Simmons may be the most popular man in the FWA, but he had no right getting him on. Now Birchall is stalking he Simmons. He Simmons, might, get out of there! He might be popular within the FWA, but he's not popular with Birchall at the moment, as he's running with his tail between his legs. Birchall is a man on a mission. Simmons tricked Birchall into the ring, and now Double Dragon stomping away again on Birchall. This can be the only plan of attack I can see, Nick. They've got to concentrate on him two on one all the time. Keep with these double team attacks. There's no way in the world they could take him one at a time. You know, it's obvious that the tactics of Double... Oh! That bloody hell turn, that was lovely. It's obviously the tactics of Double Dragon is not to have the technicality of Doug Williams or the agility of the Johnny Storm. It's just to stomp him into the ground and to keep wailing away on this monster. However, Birchall just keeps getting back onto his feet, Tony. This is horrendously terrifying. You know, I don't know a whole lot about Birchall, Nick, but I'd say he probably stands around 6'4", 6'5", and around 300 pounds. All I can say is the man is amazing. Oh, nice double hip toss there from Double Dragon and a double elbow. And a double nipper, double dragon are in control. Ross Jordan, Raj Ghost are taking in the adulations of the crowd here at the York Hall. Oh my Lord. So, Tony, he just nipped up again. He just nipped up with the most ease I've ever seen as Double Dragon turn around now. Please, Mr. Birchall, please, as Raj Ghost sends his tag partner into Birchall. Looks like Ross Jordan will be a sacrifice, but no, Raj Ghost kick to the gut, whips Birchall. Birchall underneath, knee to the gut. It looks like he, he might be setting up for this, this finisher of his. We don't have a name for it yet, but whatever it is, it's devastating. He's setting up the Raj escape. Raj get managed to escape, but oh, box his friend in the corner as we see Raj Ghost now. Virtual going for the place. Oh my lord! 
You can see the next part of this edition of Frontline on the FWA YouTube channel now. This is the resistance and we need your help.